Welcome to Sim UK. Irrespective of whether you already have or are considering getting the Virgin Media Hub 3, I'm going to tell you the things that you want to know and I'm also going to share the information that you need to know. This video is primarily aimed at educating and supporting existing and pre-existing Virgin Media customers who have or who are considering getting a Virgin Media Hub 3. I'm not a professional video editor, nor am I a professional voiceover artist. I have put a lot of time and effort into making this video, and it's pretty much the best that I can do. I appreciate your understanding. Additionally, I heartily encourage you to participate by adding your own comments and constructive points of view with the intention of helping other Virgin Media Hub 3 customers. Thank you. In the description below you can find handy links which will allow you to jump directly to the sections you want to watch and save you the inconvenience of watching the parts that you do not. I have searched tirelessly to obtain the exact specifications of a Hub 3 but to no avail. Virgin Media have not made these specifications public so it's unclear at this time exactly what the Hub 3 consists of. What we do know is that the Hub 3 is a close relative of the ARIS TG2492S, and certainly the specs listed on the ARIS datasheet webpage closely resembles the specs offered by Virgin Media. The Virgin Media Hub 3 is also an ARIS with a model number of TG2492LG-VM. Check the bottom of your router if you have one, but interestingly it's not present on ARIS's datasheet webpage. What I have discovered by comparing these two devices is the following. The Hub 3 has had a dramatic facelift, and a good one at that. The Hub 3 has removed the very useful USB port, and the Hub 3 has also disabled the two VoIP phone ports, until an undeclared later date. The firmware has been dramatically modified. Virgin Media currently offer the fastest broadband in the UK with download speeds of up to 200, in fact up to 300 megabits per second. Their competitors like BT, Plusnet and TalkTalk are lagging behind with a maximum download of 76 megabits per second. This is thanks to Virgin Media's coax cable implementation. Virgin Media's competitors BT also have extensive physical fibre optic networks for their Infinity service, but unfortunately until they have a coax cable or similar connecting to your home, then they're not going to be able to compete with the speeds that Virgin Media are currently offering. As Virgin Media have not publicly declared the inner workings of a Hub 3, the best I can do is show you their most recent version of specs. Virgin Media's next generation optical fibre, Vivid, combined with the Virgin Media Hub 3, ensures that you get super fast download speeds. The Hub 3 is Dock SIS 3.0 capable and has 24 bonded downstreams and 8 bonded upstreams. This allows a lot of flexibility for future development. The Hub 3 has four 1 gigabit Ethernet ports and dual band Wi Fi coverage with 2.4 and 5 GHz as standard. The Hub 3 has 5 internal antennas and up to 3 spatial streams in the 5 GHz band. The Hub 3 supports wireless encryption and comes built with WPS push-button synchronization and a customizable firewall. I believe the Hub 3 is technically the best router provided by any internet service provider in the UK today. But there are some caveats. So when the Hub 3 was released, it quickly became apparent that it had some problems. In a vast majority of cases, the Hub 3 installation failed at some stage and required the user to contact Virgin Media directly to resolve the fault. By far the most noticeable issue was the speed at which the Hub 3's UI responded to user interaction, or perhaps I should say the lack of speed. For those who managed to brave their way through the ever so slow UI, it quickly became apparent that the Hub 3 was incredibly sparse in terms of features. No parental controls, for example. Those brave souls who did make the changes to the Hub 3 were often confronted with their settings being ignored, or worse still, randomly reverted or altered without their consent. When attempting to make changes, some users were suddenly kicked out of their active session and unable to log back in due to there being another active administrator session. 
you would get two choices at this stage. You could wait for 25 to 30 minutes to see if the session cleared itself, or physically restart the router. Restarting the router would probably result in your settings not being applied, and you would be required to start the process all over again. Another issue is with the smart switching feature. It sensibly swaps your Wi-Fi connection to the most stable, which by the nature of virtue is almost always certainly going to be the much slower 2.4 GHz band. This results in your download speeds being limited to approximately half that that you would receive on the faster 5 GHz band. Port forwarding does not work at all, period. This has negative implications for a variety of users, but to name but a few, those who want to open ports for Xbox Live or those who want to access their Plex server remotely will be unlikely to manage it. For each of these scenarios there are a number of potential workarounds, but none of them appear to work for everybody. The security and encryption applied on the Hub 3 seems to cause issues with some devices. There are many complaints surrounding the Chromecast and the Amazon Fire TV. Interestingly, one solution to this is to create and connect these devices to the guest network, but that too has its drawbacks. The Hub 3 does have WPS, but it is sometimes the most frustrating and broken feature of the Hub 3. The Hub 3 has less range than its predecessor, the Super Hub 2 AC, and many less features to boot. It's a funny kind of upgrade. It reminds me of Microsoft Vista, but much worse. In addition to all of this, Virgin Media have much greater control and a far greater reach into the homes of all who use a Hub 3. Now, I am sure that this will benefit those who are technophobic or unable to fix or configure their own router. But to many people, this is akin to Big Brother. The list of problems for the Hub 3 is already quite extensive. Unfortunately, there are more. For those users like me who have simply had enough, the only solution is to set the Hub 3 into modem mode and purchase a third party router. This was expected to be the end to the problems, but it only brings more. For some, setting the Hub 3 into modem mode will crash the router to the point where it does not know if it's a router or a modem. It becomes completely unresponsive. This then requires a hard reset. This is where you press and hold the reset button for at least one and a half minutes and are then required to reconfigure the Hub 3 into modem mode. That means logging in with the default password changing it, adding an email address, and then logging in again with the new password, and finally setting the Hub 3 into modem mode. Fingers crossed, you don't get another issue this time round. For others, the router changes to modem mode, but corrupts their password, so you can no longer log into the Hub 3 when it is in modem mode. No password works at all, not even the default password. This means that you cannot swap the Hub 3 back into router mode, as you cannot gain access, without performing yet another hard reset. To be fair, the hard reset does seem to resolve a lot of the problems, and the modem mode seems to work OK after one. But this is where the next issue comes in. After a period of days, the Hub 3 starts to reset itself. At first, it is once every couple of weeks, then a few times a week, and eventually every 20 to 30 minutes, like clockwork. The Hub 3 in modem mode will restart every 20 to 30 minutes and take approximately 5 minutes to complete each time it does. Virgin Media are certainly aware of this because if you check out the forums there are a lot of people with the same issue. But if you call Virgin Media support they will have you performing tricks like a performing monkey but Virgin Media refused to admit that there is a terrible firmware issue with the Hub 3 and that this time they just cannot fix it. So this leads me to my conclusion and let's be absolutely clear. I think this is quite a decent bit of kit in terms of hardware. I think the issues that are present with this device are merely there because of Virgin Media's firmware. Now Virgin Media have been promising to release firmware that fixes a number of issues for months now. I received my Virgin Media Hub 3 on the 6th of April 2016. 
It's been nearly six months since I was first promised firmware updates. Thus far, I have received nothing. I heard at one stage that they were being rolled out region by region, but I haven't heard of a single user confirm that they have received any such update. I, for one, am appalled with Virgin Media for the way in which they have duped so many loyal and trusting Virgin Media customers into signing up for this router. Today, I cannot with good conscience recommend that anyone accept a Hub 3 from Virgin, and I heartily recommend that they instead insist on receiving a Super Hub 2 AC instead. Until Virgin Media replace or repair this shambles of a router, I believe that this is your best option. In terms of hardware kit, and capability, you won't find a better router for anywhere near this kind of money. I had to pay £10 for mine, but people are now reporting that they are getting them for free. And you just can't compete with that. But even though you can't compete with that, the state of this router is just horrendous. Thank you so much for watching my video today. I hope that it's been informative and helpful for you. I ask that you click the like button if you found this video helpful so that other Virgin Medias might be saved from suffering the same issues that have been plaguing me since I got the Hub 3. Thank you. Goodbye.